My name is Bryce Sturmer, and I'm the owner of Velodrome Coffee Company. And this is our next installment in our brew guide series. So for this one, we're gonna be talking about the AeroPress. So the AeroPress, I like to call it my coffee syringe. It's probably the ugliest brewer that you can possibly own. It's a piece of plastic with some rubber and a little, another piece of plastic. So it's got some good things and some bad things about it for sure. Um, one of the best things about it is it's plastic and that you can't really break it. You can throw it in your backpack for backpacking. It's definitely my favorite way to travel uh, with coffee. Super simple. Um, another great thing is when you have it all packed up like this, um, you can put stuff in here. Um, you can put your filters in this and lock that on. So it's super compact, which is awesome. They also make hand grinders that fit inside of this. So that's cool as well. Um, the, some of the things I don't particularly like about it is you can only make a very small amount of coffee. And also, uh, the directions that come with this have led a lot of people astray and have a lot of, led a lot of people to not like this brewer and to pretty much write it off. So the first step in brewing an AeroPress is to take it out of its box, take the directions out of the box, and throw the directions in the trash because they don't make any sense. Sorry, Aerobi. Um, so this, this is actually made by a Frisbee company, Aerobi. If you're a, a disc golfer, something like that, you're probably familiar with their Frisbee products. And that's great, but um, don't mean to be a hater, but we'll, we'll, do, we'll do our own way to make the coffee and the Frisbee company can just make the plastic for it. Um, so that being said, we'll get started. What we're gonna do today is kind of my favorite approach to the uh, AeroPress. The AeroPress has kind of got this cult following. Um, there's also a national and world competition stage for AeroPress. So there's tons of different recipes and tons of different ways to make AeroPresses. So today I'm just gonna be teaching you my method. It's not the simplest, it's not the most complicated, but it is my favorite. So to get that started, it's real simple. You just uh, start by putting the plunger just a little bit onto the, to the brewer like that. And it's gonna be called the inverted method, okay? That's all set up. Then I'm gonna take uh, one of my filters. Also, I really highly recommend the metal filters that you can buy for these little discs. Super great for traveling. Also yields a really incredible cup. Um, something to know about filters is that with paper filters, you're, a lot of times you're gonna lose most of the oils associated with the coffee. And if you do a metal filter, it's gonna allow all that stuff through. You might get a slight a bit, uh, amount of sediment but it's totally worth it if you're trying to get more of the oils out of the coffee and get a different mouthfeel and just a little bit more bold, exciting flavor. So if you're into that, you should definitely check out the metal discs. So all you gotta do to get this going is pre-wet this filter. So I'm gonna grab my kettle and just gonna go ahead and dump some hot water onto this guy and get that kind of pre-wet. And I'm just gonna go ahead and just set him in my cup for now. I'll just get that out of the way. So out of the way. All right, so brewer set up, filters pre-wet. We're gonna go ahead and grind our coffee up. All right, so for this brewer, I'm gonna be doing 15 and a half grams of coffee to 250 grams of water. Um, and that's about a 16 to one ratio. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, weigh out my coffee here. Great. And I'm gonna grab my Orphan Espresso Lido 2 hand grinder. It's a great grinder that I highly recommend. And if you have one, what I'm doing is one before a full turn. So when I adjust this, if you don't have this grinder, this means nothing for you. But if you do, I'm gonna do one before a full turn on the dial. So I'm gonna go one back. Sweet, set my locking ring here. These are great grinders, highly recommend them. If you don't have this grinder, what I recommend for you is kind of like a fine sand sort of grind. So not a powder, like the directions will try to tell you in the AeroPress box, but really just a fine sand. So now as you can see, I'm gonna struggle to put this jar on the bottom of here. All right, grind this up. So we got our coffee all ground up here. 
like I said, a nice like fine sand is kind of what you're looking for. Really nice consistent grind um, with the Lido and that's really gonna help with the AeroPress. So, um, real simple at this point. I'm just gonna transfer this over to there and I'm gonna put my coffee into the brewer. And I like to, like I said, I always like to weigh out the coffee I'm putting into a brewer a second time just to make sure, because sometimes, depending on your grinder, you might lose some of the grinds inside the grinder. It's called grind retentance. So you don't wanna retain a lot of that. You wanna make sure that you are weighing every chance you get. So here we go. Gonna tear this scale. This is the Ikea Black Pearl scale. It's got a timer built right in, which is pretty awesome, and you'll definitely need a timer for your AeroPress. Get that all in there. All right, perfect, 15 and a half. Gonna go ahead and level that out. And from here, it's real simple. We are gonna tear the scale again, switch this thing to its timer, and we're gonna go ahead and uh, put our water in. So we're gonna start by just saturating that coffee. And since, as you can see, um, the water doesn't like to go all the way through, so we're gonna take a spoon and just gonna break that all up. Make sure the water is contacting all of that coffee in there. This is called the bloom phase, and what's happening is a lot of carbon dioxide is being released from the coffee. Um, that carbon dioxide and that gas is getting out of the way so that the water and the coffee can work like they're supposed to together and the water can pull out all of the things it's trying to pull out in the coffee. We can go in more into depth than that in another time. But we're gonna let that bloom for about 30 seconds or so and then we're just gonna fill this back up to 250. So your full yield here. Now, I should mention, if you can't fill it all the way up to 250, which is what might be the case here, Oh, pretty much, we're good, right at 250. I was gonna say, if your coffee is really super, super, super fresh and it's really bubbly, you can fill it up to almost 250 and give it a really good stir, and then it'll kind of break up a little bit and you can pour the rest in. So you should always be able to fit 250 with the inverted method. Once I get that all um, dosed out, as you can see, I went ahead and did a little stirring just to make sure all the coffee is getting commingled with the water there. Next thing. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my pre-wet filter. Get rid of this pre-wet water here. Gonna flip this onto the brewer. So it's real simple. And then you just lock it on as best you can. We're already at a minute and 30 seconds, which is my total brew time for the AeroPress. All we're gonna do now is flip it onto the cup and press it. So this is like the only scary slash dangerous part of inverted method, but it's worth it. All right, here we go. Little drip, not too bad. And then we're just gonna go ahead and press this down. This is uh, called the AeroPress because right now we're using air and pressure to filter this coffee. Super. All right. Gonna take that off, perfect. Filled this cup right up. All right, so that is the AeroPress, and I should mention that the reason I'm doing the inverted method with this is because if you are to do it opposite, where you lock your filter on first and you set it on your cup and you put your coffee in there and you do your thing and then you press it from there, um, you're gonna lose some of the water and coffee um, through the cup, through the filter while you're trying to brew. Um, which isn't necessarily a bad thing, um, but when you do it this way, you're controlling all of your coffee and water the whole time, and then when you flip and you press again, um, you're not losing anything, which is kind of nice. Um, the other really super great thing about the AeroPress is once you get done, it's so easy to clean. Um, basically, you end up with just this like puck that kind of forms, as you can see. Just like that, it's pretty cool. And you can just boop, dump that right in the trash, falls off, and it's clean. It cleaned itself like as you were brewing, which is pretty awesome. So um, the AeroPress is great for older coffee for some reason, like older as in roasted a little while or a little long, long ago, like a month or two months even. If you brew it with an AeroPress, it still is gonna somehow bring out more of the freshness and acidity in the coffee, which is pretty exciting. So. I always use the AeroPress at home to use up my old coffee. It's a great way to still enjoy that. Great for camping, great for all that. 
Also really fun to just get super nerdy with because you can control so many different variables. Um, also super versatile. I've heard of people like doing super, super fine grinds in really hot water and almost making like a really thick concentrate that you then add water to, to make like almost an Americano style beverage. So it's, it's a lot of fun in that regard. Um, and the cup you're gonna yield, depending if you use a, a paper or a metal filter, can be full bodied, can range anywhere from full bodied to super light bodied to very acidic to very, uh, very approachable and, and not acidic at all. Um, it can really work well with natural process copies or washed, it doesn't matter. Like, AeroPress can just kind of do whatever you need it to do, which is pretty awesome. So, here we go to the AeroPress.